Hey there, Obsidian user. I wanna show you a quick free way that you can back up your vault so that you can be free from the anxiety of losing your notes, journal entries, or whatever else you might be keeping in there. If you're new around here, my name is Brandon, and on this channel, we focus on productivity tips and tricks for knowledge workers, anyone who thinks for a living. So if that sounds interesting to you, do hit subscribe for more content like this one. And with that, let's get into it. So I'll try and keep the steps up here so that you can follow along, but this shouldn't be too bad. So on the right, I've got my typical vault that already has this. And on the left, I'm gonna set up a new vault so that you can see the steps completely from scratch. So let's go into preferences up here in the top. And then we need to go into community plugins and turn on community plugins. By default, those are turned off for security reasons, but there's really no reason to fear. So let's turn those on. And then we're gonna go into browse and we're gonna search for Git. And in this case, we want Obsidian Git by Vincent. So let's tap on that, read the instructions if you'd like to, but I'll try and walk you through where you don't really have to do that. So let's click install. And after you install any plugin within Obsidian, you just have to enable it. So we're gonna hit enable and then we'll go into options. And you'll see here that the folder with which your Obsidian Vault is operating does not yet have a Git repo. So we'll go ahead and fix that here in a second. So I'm gonna open up my terminal. You can use any terminal you like. In my case, I use iterm2, but any terminal. If you're not sure where your terminal is, just hit command space to open Spotlight, or if you use Alfred, that works too, and just search for terminal. In my case, I've got iterm2. Now we need to move to the directory that our vault operates from. So I'll bring over my finder. And this is my folder that I operate from. So I use Google Drive so that I can have this across multiple devices and it's an extra form of backup. Recommend you do the same. And then you just drag the folder into your terminal and press enter and it'll change to that directory. From here, we need to make sure that we have Git installed. And so the easiest way I know how to do that is say which Git. And if it comes back with a file path, then you're all good. If for some reason you don't have Git installed and you're on Mac OS, you can use this command Xcode select dash dash install, and that'll install the command line tool so that you'll have Git. At that point, you can do the next step, which is we just need to initialize a Git repo. So to make sure that you don't already have a Git repo, just type in Git status. And if it comes back with something other than this message, then you already have Git. Um, in this case, we don't have Git installed yet. So let's go ahead and say Git init. And now we have a Git repo. And in my case, I have hidden folders showing up on my machine. That is not the default in macOS, but you can see that Git adds this little hidden folder and that's where it tracks and stores all of its information. Okay, so we've done this, this, and this. Now let's go get a GitHub account. So what we've done up to this point is we've initialized Git. Um, but it's only on our machine currently. So we need to now find somewhere to push that up to. So let's go over to Git. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna hit new repo. And in this case, I don't need a template. I am the owner and this will be our demo vault. And we wanna make sure that this is private. Very, very important. If you don't want your notes shown to the public internet, you need to click private. And then we don't need a license because we're not sharing this with anyone and we will create that repo. So this is gonna give you all the instructions to connect your local Git repository to your remote GitHub. So basically pushing your files up into the cloud. So I already have an existing repository so we can skip this first step and we can jump straight to adding the remote here. So we can legitimately just copy and paste these. So I'm gonna say, git remote add origin, and that's the directory to GitHub. I'm going to set a main branch, and I'm gonna push. In this case, I don't have any commits yet, so pushing is not gonna work. So let's just add a single file. Let's just add this remarkable file. So what I'm doing is I'm saying git add, and then the file I want, and this is gonna tell Git that I want to stage this file for commit. Basically, I wanna stage this file for storage. So I'm gonna say git commit, I'm gonna say initial commit, and then I can follow that last command. Let's see, what was it? Git push origin. So this is saying that I wanna push that commit that we just created up to the cloud. And if everything is set up, 
then that'll push all together. Now, if you're doing this for the first time and you've never used Git before, you probably wanna set your credentials. You're gonna to wanna to run this command here, git config dash dash global credential helper OSX keychain. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna prompt you for your GitHub username and password so that you don't have to enter those every time you wanna push up a commit. So that's very, very important to this plugin working because you don't want the plugin bothering you. That's the whole benefit of having the plugin to begin with. So I don't need to do that because I've done that in the past, but if you enter that command, you should be good to go. And if we go back to GitHub and then refresh, we'll see that our file is now there and we can see the contents of that file. And because it's written in Markdown, we can actually read it completely on GitHub if that was what we wanted to do. All right, so that's proving that we have a connection between Git and GitHub. And that's the core piece that we need for the whole plugin to work. So let's hop back over to our demo repository. We'll go to Obsidian, go to Preferences, or I like to hit Command Comma, and that'll take you into the system preferences automatically. And then we're gonna go to Community Plugins, Obsidian Git. So if you set up Git and then come in here and it says it's still not ready, I found that I have to quit out of Obsidian and come back, and then it will be. So I think we're all set here. So I'm gonna switch back to my primary repository so that we can see the settings that I actually run with. Let's find Git. Obsidian Git, options. All right, so I auto backup after file change. So it'll backup every 10 minutes after you've made a change. What else do I have in here? Push on backup, pull changes before push. I think most of these settings are standard, but you're welcome to take a look. Yeah, and I think we're all good. So now at this point, I just wanna force a backup just to prove that this is working. So if I hit Command P, it'll bring up the command palette, and then I can just go to Obsidian Git, and let's do a push. It says no changes to push. That's because we haven't changed anything. All right, so let's hit Create Backup and Close. It says it committed 64 files, and then it closed, which is great. So let's go back to GitHub and refresh and see what happened. Okay, and I now have two commits. So I have my original commit that I did manually, and then I have my vault backup that came from Obsidian Git. And so that is effectively what it's gonna do from here on out. So every 10 minutes that I make a change, and again, you can configure that, it'll push up all of your changes to GitHub, and you never have to worry about losing anything. The other nice thing here is you'll have all of these commits, and you can always go back in history if you need to see a previous version of a file. Boom, and success. So over time, you're gonna have more and more content in here. So I'll show you my own vault so that you can see it. So I basically end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10-ish commits a day that represent all the changes that I make in my vault. And if I ever need to go back to a previous version, all I have to do is click on this and I can see all the changes that I made that day. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't already. And if you liked this video, you probably also like my Obsidian Vault Tour. I'll have that linked over here on the side. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.